Well, this structure fascinates me and you may wonder why. Well, it is put together by some young Nigerians here in Jos, led by 24-year-old Jerry Malo. Plateau State derives its name from the Jos Plateau with boundaries of elevated hills surrounding virtually the entire plateau itself. It's a melting pot of the best of natural endowment, such as rocks, water bodies, and a near temperate climate. So while the plateau is known for these and more, not much is told of its technical hub. However, one young man appears set to tell that story. I'm Jerry Isaac Malu. I was born in Jos Plateau State in a little town called Bukos. Um, I attended the King's School Ganaro for my primary level and I went to boys' secondary school, Gindri. While Jerry's classmates busy themselves with trying to understand the theoretical aspect of their coursework, he could not be bothered as he kept his eyes on learning the technical and practical part of his school program. In my class two, I, I got a new science teacher and my new science teacher was very passionate about practicals too. If we did motion, he would bring a tire or something and just teach us to practicalize it. So I stressed him after the lessons, he gave me more lessons on it and he supported me in different ways. It's not like I don't read, I read very well, but I find it difficult to comprehend the theoretical aspect. But when we go to the lab, I find myself teaching others how to do the practical aspect of it. This led him to assemble all he could find to build his first car, which brought him some level of exposure and eventually a scholarship to study engineering at Hale Forshire University. Armed with the knowledge he had gathered in the UK, and a strong belief in his dream and his ability to excel, Jerry Malo returned to Nigeria. My parents were not in support at all. You know, it's like going to London and coming back to Nigeria. I was doing a student job, which I was paid equivalent of about 360,000 Naira every month. So to my parents, it was, it was an achievement already. Even if I don't want to school, I should just stay there and work. Well, we don't want to tell you all of the story in that report because the young man is here in our studio. Something really refreshing. You don't get to see it every day. Uh, we have to thank you for joining us this morning, Jerry Mado. Thank you. Um, the, 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 the introduction there says you're a car maker, um, but I'm being told here you're a fabricator. Which do you prefer, a car maker or a fabricator? I think both could go. Both could go because yeah. you, you not only make cars, right? Yeah, yeah. But in this instance, you're, well, you're here right now because you have made, only recently, I think I was in your introductory picture, yeah. uh, a car that is currently on exhibition at the Transcop Hilton. Yes. Fully Nigerian made. Yeah. A sports car. Yeah. What gave you the um, idea that Nigerians might be interested in a sports car that is fully Nigerian made? Um, first... I think um, Africa, or should I say Nigeria, it's a very big market for luxury vehicles. I got that exposure when I was in the UK, in Europe. We, we learned that making the cars is just half of the challenge, and selling it is the other half. <laughs> and Africa usually is the target place to sell these vehicles. So I feel there's a big market for it here. Another reason is we have every resources, we have every raw material used in manufacturing this product. Uh, but it, it's not made here. Why? The question just popped up in my mind. Why? It means there's need for us to process these raw materials to finish goods. Another reason was we have a lot of hand-skilled individuals in Nigeria and they are lying wasted. If you allow me to say, it's like the theoretical aspect is what is valued more. And I, I am poor at, at the theoretical aspect. So I saw it as a challenge. Why don't I do something practically inclined? that will also give, be a platform for others to, to put their, their minds so we could put our hands together and make a living out of it. Mm. So that drive came in and I saw the, the need to push. Yeah, what has been the response? How has your car been received 
since you made it? Uh, well, um, I, in one word, I would say amazing. Amazing? Yeah, most people have been amazed. Some people find it difficult that this was made uh, with our beer hands here in Nigeria. A lot of people think it's imported. But yeah, um, some, crit some people have criticized too. Some people have showed us places where we could make it better. And it's all accepted. I wish our producers would just show us a copy of that car so that, you know, <laughs> Nigerians themselves would be able to appreciate uh, just what we're talking about. Oh, yeah, that's Jerry. And that's your team, right? Yeah, that's my team. Uh, that's your team. We, we, we walk in. And I think that is the Transcop Hilton where the car is currently being displayed. Yeah. Yes. So that's the car. That's the governor of your state. Yeah. Uh, governor of Plateau State. Um, Trying to remember um, Simon Lalonde. Yeah, Simon Lalonde. Uh, so he was there at the unveiling of the car. Mm, yeah, have you was. received support then from the state government? Yeah, the state government have been keen supporting since the one since inception. No. Um, they have um, given us a lot of publicity. Um, being able to do something is one face of it. Letting the world know it's another face of it. They organized this um, exhibition to be in Abuja here, so the world could have a look at a product that came out from the state. So yes, the state government have been in good support. Well, I'm glad that the state government is in support and they have every reason, I mean, Nigerians in general have every reason to be proud of this. So can you tell us features of this car? Usually when they're talking about sports car, they will say it goes from this to, you know, <laughs> zero to how many miles in how many seconds and what have you. So yeah. what can this car do? Tell us. Okay, um, first, before we go into the specs, Yeah. There's one issue that pains me a lot in, in Nigeria. When you see car crashes, when yeah. you see car accidents, it's like 90% of the people in the vehicles get crushed, get smashed in the car. That's a burden we've been carrying in our mind for a while. We want to see where, when cars crash, you, know, you, you have 99% safety in the cars. Those cars that squeeze people are made out of aluminum or galvanized sheets that that can't abstain, that, that can't absorb shocks at high speed. So they are, they, they are forced to squeeze and your life is, is gone in those things. So our cars, we, we, we make them with fibers and fibers are, they have characteristics of glass. If they, if they get hit at a speed that it can't be absorbed, it breaks open like glass, like a bottle. So um, you have airbags that will protect you and then you roll out of the cars. And the cars are made with tubular chassis um, in that it gives a firm um, body to the car, which, is, which makes it very rugged for our roads in Nigeria here. These cars are designed for the futures we have here in Nigeria. Our temperature in Nigeria is a bit high, so um, you need a good cooling system. So the cars are designed to have four radiators to cool the cars no matter the temperature. Yeah, so talking about the speed, for now, this is just a first model. Um, it, it goes from zero to 120 in 12 seconds. But we, we, we aim on going higher. And it's a 2.0 uh, liter engine in it, producing about 130 brake horsepower. But just like I said, there's big room for improvement and we won't stop till we get better. On the marketing side of things, which you say is the other half, I mean, making the car yeah. is a 50% challenge, which you have done now. Yeah. On the marketing side, the other 50%, how has the response been? Have you seen any people who, any persons who are interested in buying? Yes, we have. We, we have got, we've got a lot of calls. We've got a lot of emails and messages. Um, how can they get our cars? Uh, uh, but the challenge is we've not started selling to the general public. This is more of a, like a research stage. And we want to let Nigeria know that we have talents around and with the proper fundings, we'll be able to make standard vehicles for the general consumption. But for now, it's not yet out for sale. So um, basically, we keep telling people in the next, hopefully by the next two years, we'll have vehicles ready for purchase. Listening to your story, you talked about your science teacher yeah. who you know, was very practical in terms of how he taught his classes that even though you didn't comprehend uh, a lot of what was being said theoretically, when yeah. it came to the practical side of things and you were shown how you were the ones showing other people, um, can you tell us then what you would say about the case for technical education in the country? Because there are lots of other people who 
will say that I can do this. I believe I can. And I think I, I have the gift to, if only I am shown how. I may not understand all of the grammar being spoken, but show me and, you know, I possibly can replicate this as well. Yeah, true. Uh, I, think, I think there's a very big problem in our educational system in that aspect. Um, a lot of teachers tend to, to let, me say, let me say, judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree. Um, and students have different ways they learn. For me, I learn through visuals. Uh, you, could, you could teach me by writing. It's, it would be very difficult for me to understand. But once you show me something, it's easier for me to comprehend, blend in my head, and then reverse it back to the theoretical aspect. So um, why, how my teacher became very impactful in my life was he gave me that special interest. He gave, uh, just apart from just doing the theoretical aspect, he made sure that I understood it because I had personal, I had personal passion for it. If he did motion, you get a radio, that small electric motor in the lady. That, that was way back like primary two. So he gets that small motor. As early as primary two? Yes. Uh, for me, I think since And you I never was, forgot. It must have yeah, really been very yeah. impactful. For me, I think since I was about five, six years, I, I knew where I was going. I just knew I had much passion for cars. I knew one day I would want to be a leader in an automotive industry. So uh, the drive has been since those years. So if, if it was motion, he'll bring that small motor just fixed with some batteries and we've attached to a tire and to be rolling. But once we keep it on the table, it doesn't roll, it doesn't keep moving. So the challenge was up to me. I will make one that will roll. And before primary four, I was able to do it with much lessons from him, extra lessons. So I think the way teachers teach their students has a lot to do in, the, in their life. A lot of students give up on their dreams because of the method of learning. I think Nigeria should have a very good or a better arm of education for the practical aspect for it. A lot of people feel, feel denied the, the, the chance to learn or the chance to, to showcase what they have in them. Mm. So once you're able to get one good person, it has a lot. It keeps a lot of impact in you. What's the dream for you right now? I mean, you have already said you want to be a leader in the automotive industry, and that's a big vision. Yeah. And it's, it doesn't seem far away anymore. But what exactly is the dream? What impact are you hoping to have, uh, perhaps not just in Nigeria, perhaps in the world? Um, well, I would, I would want to give hope to a lot of people. Coming out from a farming family, my dad and my mom are farmers. It's like, if you're born in a poor family, you will die in a poor family. I want to give hope to thousands of people out there. Your background has nothing to do with your future. Just forget about the past and focus. I think once I'm able to go, to impact that in so many people's life, uh, I think I feel fulfilled. Your parents were very skeptical when you decided to come back to Nigeria. Uh, <laughs> can you tell us what your relationship with them has been wow. since you got oh, back? Oh, wow. And <laughs> since you were able to create them? that's That's a very hard one. When I decided to leave the UK, back to Nigeria. First, before going to UK, I, I knew I was not going to stay there. I was focused on going to learn and coming back to Nigeria. But uh, when I told them I was coming, it was a very big challenge. It was like they disowned me. <laughs> we are suffering back here. Why do you want to come back? But I, was, I, I knew that my place was home. My place was here. So at some point, I think I just had to, to be a man and just take the decision and just come back and and start. So when I came back, it was like everyone was not happy. Everyone, I, it's, it's just like I was disowned. Everywhere, I, if I go for weddings, I meet my relations. Everybody is talking to me about it. When I go home, I don't have peace. So I had to leave home. I stayed away from home for about two years. Uh -huh. I, I barely talked to them. Just once in a while, we just, hi, hi. And they just feel I'm a stubborn child. They, they keep saying I give them BP. I... I brought this illness and what, so I just pleaded with them, please, I'm begging for three years, just three years, if you don't see the impact in my life, if you don't see the difference after three years, please, I will kneel before you and then you give me all the orders. So but I'm glad even before two years, they clearly still seeing changes. And uh, now, uh, there's nobody as proud as they are. <laughs> my father travels, is about two hours from his house to my workplace, but sometimes in a whole week, in a week of seven days, five days he comes to my place 
just to talk and go back. So I believe they are all fine now and they are all okay. But it was very difficult. I had to stand my feet real well before I was able to break that wall. So to those who will have that challenge, not knowing how to deal with family and the expectations that family will have of them, especially when the family believes that they are already on a certain path which they should follow, what would you say to them? Well, I will, I will, I will tell them not to give up. I think that will be the word. Uh, it's a very big challenge, yes, I know. Um, going after your dream and being obedient to your parents, it's something you have to weigh very carefully. Uh, but I will just tell them to, to pray hard. Just pray hard and, and believe in your dream. Never give up. And just find a way of convincing them. Find a way of letting them understand your dream. It's usually difficult to, to transfer that dream you have into someone's mind. It's usually hard to find people believing in you, those your dreams because usually it sounds impossible. So if you try this way and it doesn't work, I think you should try another method. Gradually, they will get to understand you. So when is Benny going commercial? Uh, Benny is going commercial very soon. Uh, for now, and I can't really give a date, but very soon. Will ordinary people like us, <laughs> I, I should say that, but will the young working class person be able to afford uh, your cars? Okay, um, to answer that now, I would like to give a brief explanation. Benny has different arms. Mm -hmm. We have Benny Agro. In Agro, we design agro equipment. I think this whole show just wiped out the whole thing that we do, agro equipment. We have a lot of... We had a lot of agro machines at the exhibition, but I, I just noticed no camera focused on, focused on the agro equipment. <laughs> Everything was just on the automobile. But Benny, in Benny Agro, we make, we design and we manufacture agro equipment to suit our environment here. And um, we produce them too. Then we have Benny Automobile, which we're focusing on these cars. We want to manufacture these vehicles. We have Benny Food too. Benny Food is, is still on the research stage. We want to be processing some key um, agro products in Nigeria, like Irish potato is a rare um, product. We want to see how we could add value to, to these things. So um, talking about affordability, mm -hmm. we designed this agro equipment, should I say for the low class of Nigeria, or for the farming society. Those are the products that are a lot more affordable. But for the automobiles, for now, it's focused on the luxury, and this luxury is it's quite going to be expensive. Okay, you heard it from the horse's mouth. <laughs> if you want luxury and you cannot <coughs> afford it now, you can save up for it. But it's been such an honor to have you on our program. We've been Thank speaking you. with Jerry Malo, who is a fabricator and also a car maker. Sunrise Daily continues in a bit. Please stay with us.